Hello, everybody. Welcome to Ms. McGuire video lecture. And today we're covering the somatic sensory division of the nervous system. This is part one video uh, where we will talk only about anatomy. And then the second video will be about physiology. Let's go ahead and um, begin. So uh, we're covering somatic uh, sensory um, division. That means we will talk about sensation that reaches your cerebral cortex and you will understand this sensation. But before um, that, you need a receptor. So you need sensory receptor that would um, sense the change and send electrical impulse towards your uh, brain, right? So how can we classify those receptors? They can be free nerve endings, like what's shown here on the diagram um, on the top. You have a unipolar sensory neuron, and here's dendrites, free nerve ending dendrites, and they will pick up that stimulus. Now, this receptor is for pain and temperature, or receptors can be encapsulated endings. Now, again, you have your unipolar sensory neuron, you have your dendrites, but they are inside capsule. And those are for pressure and touch. Or you might have even a special cell, special receptor cell, like a rod in the retina or cone in the retina. Um, so that's for a receptor would be example. We also can classify receptors based on location. Is there the exteroceptors, interoceptors, proprioceptors? So exteroceptors respond to stimuli arising outside the body. Interoceptor respond to stimuli arising in internal, viscera and blood vessels. And proprioceptors respond to stretch in skeletal muscles, tendons, joints, ligaments, and connective tissue covering of bones and muscles. So example of proprioceptor would be muscle spindle or Golgi tendon organ. And uh, muscle spindle will pick up a uh, stretch and speed of stretch, and Golgi tendon organ will pick up tension in your tendons. Right, so again, where they located, we can classify them based on location. Um, we also can classify receptors uh, based of functional type. So chemoreceptor uh, will uh, respond to chemical stimuli. Osmoreceptors respond to salute concentrations. Nociceptors for pain. Mechanoreceptor for physical stimulus sound, balance, you know, touch, pressure, that's all mechanoreceptor. Thermoreceptor, the stimulus will be temperature. Um, so here we have a summary of uh, this um, classification of sensory receptors. Uh, so we can see we have free endings, mechanoreceptors, um, like muscle spindle, um, the historical name, the location, and stimuli, uh, stimuli. So please stop the video and um, read this uh, diagram. Um, now, general senses are a group of sensory mod mod modalities um, that pretty much spread through your whole body. So when we have about sensation, we have general senses and we have special senses. If they are general senses, it will be kind of like all through your body, like your touch, temperature, vibration, pressure, pain. When we talk about special senses, it will be your vision, your smell, your uh, olfaction, right? Your smell, your uh, taste, your hearing. So you have a special organs uh, with pretty complex structure and uh, very often special receptors like rods or cones or you know, hair cells that uh, will pick up those special uh, sensory information like hearing or vision, right? Uh, general sense distributes through the body, special senses are specific organs dedicated to it, just what I told you, and modality refers to how information is encoded. 
So we have different modalities, vision, hearing, olfaction, taste, touch, um, interoception, some example over here, like a baroreceptors or chemoreceptors, right? And then uh, you can see different organs where they found and what is their stimulus? So light will be stimulus for vision, uh, vibration for hearing, uh, chemicals for olfaction, food chemicals for taste, pressure, pain, temperature for touch, and then blood pressure, pH for uh, these baroreceptors and chemoreceptors. Now, the first uh, somatic sensation, and it's a, a um, special sense it, that we're discussing, is gustation. Uh, so that's your taste. Um, so you have papillae um, on your tongue. Those are raised bumps on tongue. And you have transduction of this gustatory information. Uh, you can pick up four types of taste that we will discuss in the next slide. But in, within those papillae, you will have taste buds. Uh, and they will have uh, your receptor cells. So you can see on the diagram here that our uh, taste um, bud and you have cells, right, that are your receptor cells. And then those receptor cells are gonna send signal to your brain through a facial nerve, glossopharyngeal, and vagus. So facial seven, glossopharyngeal nine, and vagus is 10. Um, and um, this is a um, type of gustation, um, type of taste that you can um, sense. It's sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and umani. I think it says four over here, but this umani number five was discovered um, the last, right? So for a while, we thought we have for gustation, we have only four. But now we know umani, kind of like specific taste for meat, right? And um, of, of course, what you see over here, G protein uh, coupled receptors, that's for physiology part. Now, another special uh, sensation that is somatic as well, that will reach your consciousness is audition. So that's pretty much your ability to hear. So if you look at the structure of the ear, uh, on this diagram. So we have auricle, um, right? Oh, that's uh, your external ear. Um, that's uh, pina of the ear. Then you have ear canal. And this part is your external ear. Then uh, tympanic membrane separate your external ear from middle ear. In the middle ear, you will have uh, auditory ossicles, so small, uh, bones, malleus, incus, and stapes, and um, that will be your middle ear. You have eustachian tube that connects your middle ear to the um, oral cavity. Um, then you have your inner ear, and in the inner ear, you will have structure called like cochlea, vestibule, several circular canals, and then nerves, vestibular nerve, and cochlear nerve, and then they uh, come together from vestibular cochlear nerve or nerve number eight, cranial nerve number eight. So that's the inner ear. Um, now, very briefly, just how the sound uh, uh, waves um, you know, enter your ear and what they do to this internal structure. Right, so you have um, sound waves, that is a vibration, right? So you have the sound wave and it's gonna vibrate tympanic membrane. Now temp tympanic membrane gonna uh, move your auditory ossicles, malleus, incus, and stapes, and they will amplify uh, this um, uh, vibration. And then the step is gonna vibrate another membrane that is called oval window. And this vibration will be passed inside your cochlea. Now in a cochlea, you will have several ducts, right? So uh, you have a vestibular duct or scala vestibuli, you have cochlea duct and scala tympani. 
right? So that's three, um, uh, you know, structures, three uh, membrane structure inside. Uh, and again, in the physiology, we will talk uh, about this in more details, but here you just see how this vibration moving through the scala vestibuli, and it's, it vibrates a special membrane inside the cochlear duct that is called basilar membrane. And this basilar membrane gonna generate, it's a beginning of this electrical impulses. So is there a special cells over there? hair cells. So those cells going to generate action potential, right? Um, or it will be receptor potential first, then action potential. But anyway, it will generate this electrical impulses. They will move through this cochlear nerve towards your brain, and you will hear stuff, right? Right, okay. Uh, now, um, you also, you know that you have um, uh, uh, sounds of high frequency, medium frequency, and low frequency. Like, so how you determine what is the frequency of the sound that you receive? And it will based on where we disturb the basal membrane. So high frequency sounds displace the basal membrane near the base of cochlea. Medium fre frequency sound displays the basal membrane near the middle, and low frequency sounds displays the basal membrane near the apex, right? And then if we have like really low, low frequency, if they do not display this membrane at all, then you will not hear uh, that particular frequency. So usually we can hear from 20 to 20,000 hertz, right? And all these different um, uh, frequency will uh, display the basal membrane at a different point, and that's how your brain determines, uh, you know, what is the, um, you know, if you have like a high pinch or low pinch. Um, another somatic sensory, uh, somatic sensation that is part of your special senses is vision. Um, it's a transduction of light stimuli and um, you have a special organ to do it, that's your eye. So if you look at this diagram here, that's like just a few structures and we will have a better diagram, but you have eyeball inside the uh, bony orbit and your eyeball um, will be covered by um, pretty tough connective tissue that is called sclera, that is this white part. Now the most anterior part of this uh, sclera are gonna be translucent and it's called cornea. Um, also the eyeball and your eyelids um, are covered by uh, conjunctiva, and this is a mucous membrane. Um, you have also several muscles that hold your eyeball um, and move your eyeball, I would say, right? It's rotate, elevate, depresses, and so on. Um, so over here, you can see those extraocular muscles. They originate from bones of orbit and insert into surface of eyeball. And when muscles contract, that produce movement of your eyeball. So you have superior, inferior, lateral, and medial uh, rectus muscles, and you have superior and inferior oblique muscles. Um, and uh, those muscles will, again, uh, elevate, depress um, your eyeball, produce lateral and medial uh, rotation. And now those muscles are innervated by cranial nerves. Cranial nerve number three, number four, and number six. <coughs> uh, now your eye has three tissue layers. We have fibrous tunic, vascular tunic, and neural tunic. Um, and we have two cavities, anterior cavity, uh, and posterior cavity. 
So over here, you, you see that's a posterior cavity on the posterior side. And here is, we have anterior cavity. And anterior cavity has uh, two chambers. Um, so what separates those cavities are actually a lens. Right? So in front of the lens, you have anterior cavity. Behind those lens, posterior cavity. And then anterior cavity has a, a anterior and posterior chamber. Now you have the colored part of your eye is called uh, iris. And pupil is that black spot inside that actually just the opening uh, that allow light to enter your eyeball, right? So we have pupil, um, that's the opening inside the iris and you have iris, uh, you have lens, Lens are hold in place by suspensory ligaments. Um, right then you have um, your uh, anterior cavity that contains a fluid called aqueous humor, and you have posterior cavity that contains uh, vitreous humor. That's um, you know another type of um, fluid. It's it's more like a jello. Uh, looking structure. Um, then you, you see uh, muscles over here. Um, and we, we can see the three tunics. We see neural tunic, part of the neural tunic is retina, vascular tunic called choroid, and fibrous tunic called sclera. Right, and then you have a um, transparent part covering anterior uh, side of your eyes that called cornea. Uh, now in the retina, we have a couple important landmarks that we wanna know. It will be optic disc over here. And where you have optic disc, this is the beginning of your optic nerve. So you see that this one is optic nerve over here and you have blood vessels entering uh, your eyeball as well. So where you have this optic disc, that's your blind spot. You don't have any receptors uh, here. So. If something, if, uh, if uh, light or if this object, um, you know, like light from uh, reflected from the object falls inside this optic disc, you will not see it. Then you have um, macula over here and fovea uh, centralis uh, in a central. This is for highest visual acuity, right? So that's your for your colored and the sharpest vision, that's a part of the retina. Now let's look at the retina itself. And um, so let me, let me do this. Uh, let me just move this a little bit down so we can see it better, hopefully, right? Okay, um, so we will, um, so this is front of, of eye, this is back of eye, and uh, retina is your neural tunic, and it starts from this point, pigment epithelium, um, up to this point where you have your optic, um, fibers of optic nerve, right? So, so it's pretty much um, right from here to here, and then you have, um, uh, vitreous humor over here in the anterior um, chamber, and then you have choroid and you have sclera over here. Now, if you look at the retina, so it's better now look at this cartoon picture because that's a histology slide. So you have epithelium, we call it pigment epithelium, and um, it has a lot of this, you see granules, melanin granules, um, so it's, it's allow you um, kind of to um, uh, absorb some extra light. So it doesn't just um, scatter inside your eyeball. Now, kind of like embedded just inside this pigment epithelium, you have uh, your rods and cones. So here's a rod and cone, and those are photoreceptors. Then they are connected to bipolar cells. So bipolar, remember, it has two processes coming from cell body, right? So that will be a layer of bipolar cells. And of course, you have some other supporting cells here as well. And then bipolar cells, synapses with ganglion cells. So that's the ganglion cells. 
and they have cell body, right? And they have uh, axon. And those axons of ganglion cells form optic nerve. So here you can see also pigment epithelium. Uh, then you see rods and cones over here. And then here's the bipolar cells and here's the axons going this way and going this way. And those are cell body of ganglion cells and they are uh, axons forming the optic nerve right there. <clears throat> now, photoreceptors. Two main parts of photoreceptors are inner segment and outer segment. So here's the outer segment over here. And here's the inner segment. Um, there is a two type of receptors, rods and cones. And rods is for your uh, uh, and the black and white vision and cones for colored uh, vision. Um, so you use rods uh, when it's, uh, uh, you know, like in a, in, in a darker part of, uh, part of the day or at night. And when we have a bright and sunny uh, day, when we, in a, uh, you know, even maybe we can be inside the room, but we have light on, then the cones are activated. Um, and cones, we have red cones, green cones, and blue cones, and different um, um, different light, because light has different um, wavelengths. And this is, we will discuss in the physiology part as well. So uh, different light, like a red light will activate red cones, green, green, and blue, blue. And then the combination of, um, you know, activation of these cones will give you all the colors that you see, right? But we only have three cones. And it's like in your printer. If you buy a printer, you really are not buying all, you know, 100 different uh, colors for your printer, right? You, you buy red ink, green ink, and blue ink. Uh, and then a uh, combination of these can make all different colors when you print out some pictures, for example. So, so similar with your photoreceptors. So we have rods and we have cones, cones for uh, colored vision, rods for uh, black and white vision, and cones, um, there is three types, red, green, and blue. Um, now, um, those rods and cones, they located inside your retina, right? And then from a retina, uh, electrical impulse goes to your brain um, in a um, uh, in a occipital lobe where you have primary uh, visual center. Um, and um, so here you can see two eyes, um, right? So we have a retina. And by the way, you know, like a nose would be here. So we call this part of the retina nasal retina, and this part of the retina we call temporal retina. So some uh, stimulus, some light um, gonna activate uh, receptors on the temporal side of the retina. Some mm, light will activate receptors in the nasal part of the retina. And when those uh, cells are activated, they, they're gonna send a um, signal toward this um, you know, part of your brain, right? Uh, what interesting over here, it says that axon from medial side Right, so they say like, okay, that's the medial side. They're gonna cross over. So if you, um, so look, um, you know, axons goes here, right? And then they, uh, they go to this side of the brain. And axons, axons from here go to the opposite, to the right side. So we have some fibers, some axons will cross. And where they cross is called optic chiasm. So this part is called optic nerve, and this part is called optic tract. So right, this is optic tract. Because in the optic tract, we have fibers from both eyes, from left and right, right? So that's your left eye. So you only have in optic nerve fibers from left eye, but in the optic tract, you have fibers from left and right eye, right? Now also left field of view is processed on the right side of the brain and right field of view 
uh, process on the left side of the brain. And we also have then some uh, axons that go into different parts of your brain, like um, uh, um, suprachiasmatic nucleus of hypothalamus, lateral geniculate nucleus of thalamus, right? So we, and then this is called optic radiation, right? So that's optic radiation, go to the occipital lobe. Um, now, why it's uh, kind of interesting, because if you look over here, because we have some axons that they will cross um, at this optic chiasm, um, that means that depends where you have lesion, or you have some damage of axons, it will affect your uh, vision differently, right? So for example, number one, if you have lesion over here, and this is your left uh, optic nerve, then you completely lose uh, um, the, uh, the visual, visual loss uh, from the left eye. And it makes sense, right? So if you have a cheer, right, you would lose um, vision from the right eye. But if you have it in a chiasma, right in the middle, look what's gonna happen, right? It's interesting, it will be bitemporal um, hemi, Anopia. So you actually, because look, the light that coming from here, right? The stimulus are coming from here, from this side, this doesn't need to cross. So it's not damaged. So it still reaches your brain. Or light that coming from here, it still reaches your brain. That makes sense? So that if it comes from here, I don't know why it's not. It reaches your brain, it's, uh, right? So it comes from this side, right over here. Or it comes from this side, this blue arrow. Uh, you still will process this information, but whatever comes from here and here, right? You will not see it. So that's, is that just interesting uh, how complicated this effect can be based on different lesions. And it's all because we have some fibers that cross and some fibers that do not cross. Okay, so that's your vision. And um, now why do we have uh, this picture here? Because I just wanna remind you that we started with the um, uh, general uh, sensation, right? We start with general sensation, like somebody touches you, somebody, uh, hurts you or pushes you, or uh, you, you know you feel temperature. That's your um, general uh, sensation or samara sensation. And then we cover specific organs, special senses like uh, gustation, hearing, vision. Right. So now at this slide tells you. So when you have your um, somatosensory um, information. So that would be a touch, vibration, pressure, temperature. Uh, it, it goes from the periphery, from your receptors towards your brain. And there is a special area in your brain. It's located into parietal lobe, right? So it goes over here, right there. And um, different part of this lobe receives uh, information from different part of your body. Right, so for example, here where you receive information from your toes, this part. So kind of like you go from here, right? So uh, from center to the, um, uh, so that would be your uh, temporal lobe over here. So you have information coming from ton that reaches specific part of this somatosensory cortex in um, parietal lobe. And this is called sensory homunculus. It's a map of somatosensory receptors. Well, not receptors, but uh, where this somatosensory information is processed by your brain. And um, we're gonna end up this video with some problems, uh, homeostatic imbalances with eye and ear. So problems with the reflection. Um, so if you have your normal eye, 
it's called emetropic eye. Then um, your light, right? So here you see you have a light that enters your eye, goes through your lenses, and lens is gonna uh, bend the light, um, right? And uh, then it needs to be focused on the retina. So if you wanna see object nice and clear, that light reflected from this object need to focus on your retina and then you're good. It's your amotropic eye. Now, sometimes what happens then people have eyeballs that is too long or too short. And if it's too long, then the light focus in front of the retina. And this is called near sighted eye or myopic eye. Uh, or the eyeball might be too short and the light focuses behind the retina. And this is called uh, hyperopic, wait, I'm sorry. It's called hyperopic or far-sighted eye. So neither one gonna work because the object will appear very blurry because you cannot focus it on the retina. So you cannot properly activate those rods and cones. And that's, that's a problem with reflection, but it can be corrected by um, glasses. So myopic eye or nearsighted eye will be corrected with concave lens and hyperopic eye with convex lens, right? But that's, um, you know, it's, it's not something that's related to your age. Uh, you know, uh, conditions that related to your age when you start uh, kind of see better uh, the distant objects and you cannot see very well um, when the object is close. This is, um, this is different. We'll discuss it in the next video. This is pretty much like somebody would be born with uh, eyeball too long or too short. Oh, and um, Another um, condition is astigmatism. Uh, astigmatism caused by unequal curvature uh, in different parts of the cornea or lens. So cornea is, again, cornea is this part over here, and this is lens. So if you have this curvature that is not um, uh, you know, nice and uh, concave, or this one has like you know, surface that is not um, uh, curved equally, then you know you would have astigmatism, and it's corrected by, by cylindrically rounded lens, and cornea implants, or laser procedures. So you can you can make it uh, you know nice and smooth. Uh, and uh, homeostatic imbalances of hearing. Um, now, when we're looking at the um, diseases related to hearing, hearing loss, um, we divide them into conduction deafness and neuro or sens sensory uh, sensory neuro deafness or mixed hearing loss. Now, if you remember, we just mentioned briefly that we have outer ear, middle ear, and inner ear. So everything to this point up to the beginning of inner ear, if there is any problem here, it will be conduction deafness. Um, when blocked sound, uh, conduction deafness, blocked sound conduction to the fluids of the inner ear. So uh, pretty much you have the sound waves, but there is something in the middle ear, right? or um, you know, even in the outer ears, it prevents those waves from reaching these fluids inside the cochlea, right? From reaching the inner ear. It can result from impact airbags, perforated eardrums. So if, for example, you have some holes over here, uh, or otosclerosis, that means those, um, um, little bones, those ossicles, they became sclerotic and they cannot move uh, freely, right? So that conduction deafness. If you have damage in the inner ear, damage to the neural structure at any point from the, um, those cells inside cochlea to the, uh, those nerves, uh, right? Um, cochlear nerve, 
um, or even the uh, part of the brain that receives this um, stimulus, then it will be sensory neuro, uh, neural deafness. Um, or you can have something, um, you know, mix that will include both, obviously. Uh, might be some um, autosclerosis and maybe some damage of hair cells. Right? So that would be mixed hair and clothes. Okay, so I think that's uh, that was the last slide. Um, so I just want to remind you that I was covering uh, somatic sensory division briefly, both general senses and special senses. Um, and this was only anatomy part. And I was using OpenStax Anatomy and Physiology textbook. Right, so thank you so much for watching and I hope it was helpful.